canoe, very obvious. There's a lot of things going on in a lot of people's lives. But there's sickness and there's troubles and there's trials and, and issues and I, I have, I know some of what's going on but I probably have no idea of everything that everybody's dealing with but God does. That's right. And he's already started to heal. He's already started to move. He's already started to work in lives, but there's more that he wants to do. There's some that have come and got what God wants to give to them, but there's some who have not. It's still here. God is still offering. And as we go through these scriptures and as we go through whatever God has in store for us, and believe me, I have no idea what God has in store. You be obedient to the Spirit. Don't you wait. For me to ask you to do something. Don't you wait for me to tell you it's time to do something. You be obedient to the Spirit of God. And I've got to say this. I've been thinking about this for weeks. A lot of times we'll sit and we'll wait for the Spirit to move on us before we will move. You don't have to do that. God has already told you in His Word. If you want something, come and get it. He doesn't say wait till the Spirit yanks you up and brings you. He didn't say wait till you get butterflies in your belly. He has already told you. He said if you come, I will answer. He said if you need me, come and seek me. You don't have to wait for anything else. He's already told you that that is available to you. So many times we'll sit in the pew and we won't move unless we get goosebumps or we won't move unless we get butterflies in our belly or, or we wait for a sign. I'm going to tell you something. You've already got your sign. This is the word of God. This is God speaking. Throughout this word, he said, seek me. Throughout this word, he said, come to me. Throughout this word, he said, ask. You've already been told to do it. You have no reason. You have no excuse to wait. Be obedient. In the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 11. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace. Goodwill toward men. I want to look at that last verse that I read there. This talks about when Christ came into the world and why he came into the world. And in that last verse, the angel is saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to men. I want to focus on that word peace. He came to bring peace. Now how can I say that? Has there ever been peace on this earth? There has not been peace on this earth. From the time that Adam and Eve fell and sin entered in, there has not been peace on this earth. There's been nation fighting nation and kingdom against kingdom. There's been turmoil in families. There's been turmoil within your own mind. There has not been peace on this earth. So how can you say that peace on earth and goodwill toward men? I want you to listen to what he really said. He didn't say that there would be peace to the earth. He said peace on earth and goodwill toward men. It has been offered, but in order to get that peace, you have got to receive that peace. You have got to accept that peace. You have got to take that peace onto you. He came to bring peace if you would have it, if you would receive it, if you would accept it, if you would bring it into you. I want to make this really clear before I move on. He came with a promise, a promise of peace. And I know you look around, turn on the news, read your newspaper, just go through your daily life, and you know that peace is not here. I'm going to tell you, Christian, if you don't have peace in your life, it's your own fault. It's because you have not accepted the peace that he promised. You have not taken it unto yourself. You have not received it. Every child of God can live in peace. I know that there's sickness and there's financial problems and there's family problems and there's problems with the job and there's problems here and there's problems there. But through it all, you can live in peace. We talked about uh, last week about all things work together for good. And I gave you the example when Joseph was in the pit. He wasn't saying this is a good thing. But I believe that he had peace. Just reading his story, he never gave up on God. He continually trusted God. He believed in God. He continued to be a man of God. And he had peace through whatever came. And we can too. Amen. He went through some hard, rough things. They wanted 
to kill him. They put him in a pit. They sold him into slavery. We all know everything that he went through. But through it all, God was there. Through it all, God never left him. Through it all, God never abandoned him. And through it all, gave him, God gave him that peace. That peace that passes all understanding. Way down deep in his heart. That nothing can take away. And we as children of God can have the very same thing. If we choose to have it, it is a choice. It's up to you. I told you, you don't have to wait to get something from God. Well, I'm telling you this too. God has told you in here. And just as sure as he said, seek me, you will find me. Uh, just as sure as he said that, he said that you can have peace. But you've got to choose to have peace. You can come up here and you can pray for peace. And you can pray till your tongue falls out. And you can pray till you can't talk no more. And never have peace. Because you have got to take it in. You have got to accept it. You have got to apply it. You have got to believe it. You have got to trust that in the midst of it all, you can have peace. I'm going to go to the book of Philippians, chapter 4, in here, verse 6. Be careful for nothing. That word careful there actually means don't worry. Don't be anxious. And I want you to say what he said not to worry about or not to be anxious about. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Amen. Don't worry about anything. Amen. Don't get anxious about anything. Don't let it get to you. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Listen to this. If you do that, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your mind. Our minds are in turmoil a lot of times. Our hearts are heavy and troubled a lot of times because we don't do this. I don't know how many times I've said this up here. This is a God that cannot lie. This is a God that means what he says. And this is a promise that this God made. If you trust me, if you believe me, if you come to me with your problems, you can have a peace no matter how bad it gets. He does not, cannot, will not lie. I've asked before, how many of you believe this is the word of God? Everybody says they do. But how many of us live like we believe that this is the word of God and it means what it says? That's right. We can live in peace. If we choose to live in peace, if we choose to believe God, if we choose to trust God, if we do what he said to do, when you got a problem, when you got an issue, when you got a circumstance, what did he say? Come to me. Come to me. And through prayer and supplication, present your request. And if you do that, he'll fix everything. Is that what it says? No. No. He will keep your hearts and your mind in a state of peace, regardless of whether he fixes it or he doesn't fix it. Mary made this statement. She had a child years ago that God chose to take home. He didn't fix it. He didn't allow the child to stay. He didn't allow her to have the child. And he's not always going to fix everything. But through it all, he can give you peace in that thing. Remember the scripture I read last week? The Bible says, in all things, we are more than conquerors. Mm -hmm. Not after things are over. Not before things start. In, in, in the midst of it all, in the darkest time, in the deepest valley, on the roughest sea, in that situation, we are more than conquerors. If we trust God, if we believe God, we can have that peace that passes all understanding. Have you ever been in that place where things are really And people can look at you and say, how can you do it? Because God can give you something that passes human understanding. God can give you a peace that nobody can understand. You don't even understand it yourself. You can't define it. But it is a gift of God. Whatever you're going through. I know a lot of people in here are going through a lot of things. I know there's sickness. Isn't that 
that sickness, God can give you peace. Yes, right. I know there's financial problems. In those financial problems, God can give you peace. Amen. I know there's employment problems. In those employment problems, God can give you peace. I know there's family problems. In those family problems, God can give you peace. Somebody here has a hard decision to make. It's rough and it's hard and it's created turmoil in your heart and in your mind. But if you trust God, if you go to God, if you present it to God, make your request known unto Him, put it in His hands, you will have peace. Amen. Amen. Not because I said so, because God said so. Amen. Amen. Right. Well, throw this in. It's not your choice. It's his choice. If you're a child of God, our Father art in heaven, hallowed be the name of the kingdom. Come, thy will be done. That's right. People pray that a lot. How many of us mean it? Mm -hmm. Thy will be done. Regardless of what I think, regardless of what I want, regardless of what I, I think is the best thing, thy will be done. That's right. It's not your choice. If you truly give it to him and trust him and believe him, allow him to make the decision that he wants to make, you will have peace. That's right. Book of Romans, chapter 5. Sorry, chapter 8, verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. That's our problem. We mind the things of the flesh. You know what we've done? We put everything on the flesh. We base everything on the flesh. We base everything, our decision, our choices, our action, are based on the flesh. What we know in the here and now, they're based on what we can touch, what we can feel, what we can see, what we can smell, what we can hear. They're not supposed to be. Listen, he said, they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the Spirit. That's where our mind needs to be. That's where our focus needs to be. There's a scripture that says, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. What was the mind of Christ? To do the will of the Father, no matter how hard it was, no matter how rough it was, no matter how bad it got. In the garden, he prayed, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. I want you to really think. It don't say this. You go back and you read that account. From that point forward, when he was praying, he was in agony. He was in anguish. We all know the Bible says his sweat became as great drops of blood. His heart was breaking. He was tore up. He was scared. He was in the flesh. He was a man. He wanted out of it. He wanted out of it bad. He asked the Father to get him out of it. And he wanted out of it so bad that his sweat became as great drops of blood. But when he prayed, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. From that point forward, you don't see him acting like that. He's calm. He's collected. When he stands before Pilate, he's calm. He's collected. On his way to the cross, do you read where he falls and people come to him and he tells them, weep not for me. He's got a peace. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He had a joy. He had a peace that's beyond comprehension, that passes all understanding, that you can't explain, that you can't describe. How could he be like that when he knows what's going to happen to him? How could he be like that when he knew they were going to scourge him and flay the flesh off of his back and yank the beard out of his face and drive nails in his hands and his feet and all the things that they did to him? How could he be like that? Because he gave it to the Father. That's right. And trusted the Father that the Father's will was what was best. And that's how we have to be. Okay, I keep coming back to this because God won't let me get away from it. You're going through rough things. You're going through hard things. You're going through trials. You're going through tribulations. But all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. To them that are called according to His purpose. In the end, it'll be worth it all. Amen. There's a song that says, it'll be worth it after all, child. It'll be worth it after all. All of the climate, all of the struggle, all of the trial, give it to God and it will be worth it. I'm not saying he's going to take it away. He didn't say to Christ when he prayed, let this cup pass from me. Okay. 
He didn't say that. He didn't take it away. He's not going to take everything away. He's not going to make everything sunshine and roses. But he'll give you what you need to get through it. He'll give you peace in the midst of it. He will give you comfort. He will give you joy no matter what is going on. But the problem is, they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. I don't want that to happen because it breaks my heart. I don't want that to happen because it worries me. I don't want that to happen because it creates issues for me. You really think about this. I want you to really, really think hard about this. The things you've gone through, the things you're dealing with, the things you don't like. Why don't you like them? I would say 99.9% .9 of the time it's because of the effect it has on you. You're not considering God's will. You're not considering how it may affect somebody else for the good. You're not considering what God may bring out of it. You're considering it how it makes you feel. What it's going to do to you. As a child of God, we are not to be that way. What's the Bible say? Esteem others more highly than yourself. Put their good ahead of your good. What if Christ would have only thought of himself? That's right. He put our good ahead of his good. Thank you, Jesus. We are never going to reach that point where we can have that kind of peace until we live like a child of God. The way that God said to do it is the way that it works. Get our focus off of the flesh and onto the spirit. They that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. We need to mind the things of the spirit. We need to focus on the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be spiritually minded is peace. You want to live in peace? You want that peace that passes all understanding in the midst of your problem, trial, trouble, tribulation, whatever you've gone through, and you want that peace in it, then you've got to be spiritually minded. Again, I'm going to say it, I already said it, but I'm going to say it again. The Bible tells us, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. We have to think like he thought. We have to put the will of the Father ahead of, uh, of our own things. We have to put the, the, the good of others ahead of our own things. We have to be spiritually minded. He goes on and he says, carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. The carnal mind, if we're focused on ourselves, if we're focused on a fleshly thing, and that's an enmity with God. That's an opposition to God. And listen to what he says about that. We are not subject then to the law of God. If we're in a fleshly mind, if we're thinking in a fleshly manner, we're not subject under the law of God. We're not subject to receive the promises of God. That peace that passes all understanding. That joy in the midst of trial and trouble. That the strength we need to get through it. We're not subject under the things of God if we're thinking in the flesh. We need to understand that. We're just going to continue to be miserable. But if we are spiritually minded, we receive the spiritual promises. He said, they're not subject under the law of God, neither need can be, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. When we go around moaning and groaning and whining and complaining and bawling and, and say, oh, woe is me and poor me, why do I got to go through this? Why do I got to deal with this? We are not pleasing to God. We are supposed to walk on a different plane. We are supposed to be on another level. As children of God, we are supposed to carry ourselves differently than the world carries themselves. We're supposed to step out of the flesh and walk in the spirit. How many places, I don't know how many places where he says to walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. And if we can, get to that peace that passes all understanding. That joy that's unspeakable in everything. Listen. To be carnal minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God, but ye are not in the flesh but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. If the Spirit of God dwells in you, if you are filled with the Spirit of God, if you allow Him to fill you, 
to control you, to take charge of every area of your life, then what does he say? You are not in the flesh, but you are in the spirit. I believe everybody sitting here, I don't know your hearts, only you and God know your heart. I believe everybody sitting here is born again. And if you're born again, you have received the Holy Spirit of God. But that's not being filled with the Spirit of God. You have got to give Him yourself, every area of yourself. You have got to empty yourself of you, of your wants, your desires, uh, things that you think are good, the things that you think are bad. You've got to take it all out and clean out everything so that the Spirit can fill every corner. That's being filled with the Spirit of God. And He said that if you are filled with the Spirit of God, then you will not be in the flesh. You will not walk in the flesh. You will not think after the flesh, but you will walk in the Spirit and you will think after the Spirit. And then you will receive these promises that God has given us. Peace in everything. And I'm not saying things still aren't going to hurt you. I'm not saying Things are going to yank at your heartstrings. I'm not saying not all of that. But even in that, you can still have peace. Understand. Really understand. Really get a hold of it. When Christ went to the cross and everything he suffered leading up to and on the cross and through his death, it hurt. It hurt a lot. Physically. Mentally. Emotionally. It hurt, but he could still maintain that peace over his own self. He was in control because the Spirit was taken over, because the Spirit was directed, because the Spirit was guiding. It had to break his heart when he hung on that cross and looked at those who days before had said, Hosanna to the King, glory to God in the highest. Strewed palm branches in front of him and saying what a great person he was. And now there they are. Just a little bit before crying, crucify him. That had to hurt. That had to break his heart. But he could still have the peace of knowing he was fulfilling the Father's will and that all would work together for good. And on the other side, everything would be all right. And we can have that very same trust, that very same confidence, that very same thing that will give us peace if we will but do it, accept it. He came to give peace to whoever would accept it. And if you're not living in peace, i got to say it again, it's your fault. That's right. He's made it available. It's your choice whether or not to take it and bring it unto yourself. Galatians, chapter 5, verse 22. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. And it goes on, but I want you to understand that if you have given yourself to God, if you have been filled with the Spirit of God, you are going to produce the fruit of the Spirit. And one of the fruits of the Spirit is peace. You will have peace. An apple tree will have apples. A pear tree will have pears. And a child of God who has given himself to the Spirit will have peace. That has been planted. That will grow. That will bring forth. That's what will happen. If you are filled with the Spirit of God, you will produce the fruit of the Spirit. You will produce peace. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. That's the problem with the church. That's the problem with most Christians. We have left the Spirit out. We are walking in denomination. We are walking in our own idea. We are walking in what our pastor said. We are walking in this and we're walking in that. But we need to be walking in the Spirit. I want you to understand this, church. You need to get a hold of this, Christian. You really need to understand. You cannot be fully what God wants you to be. You cannot do. You cannot experience. You cannot have what God wants you to have unless you are filled with the Spirit of God. That's right. Filled. Mm -hmm. Completely. And we don't do that. I don't know why we don't do that. I don't understand why we don't just give ourselves to God. Crucify the flesh. 
I heard something this morning just in passing. And it really stuck out. We are to present our bodies a living sacrifice. We are to crucify the flesh. You know what happens to a sacrifice? It is killed. It has no life in it. And then it is consumed. The fire consumes every bit of it. And that's what we need to do with the flesh. We need to kill it so there's no life in it. And it needs to be consumed so there's nothing left to rise up again. But we don't do that. We give in to the flesh. We walk in the flesh. We think in the flesh. We talk in the flesh. We need to be walking, talking, thinking, living in the spirit. And you can't do that. You can't just decide I'm going to do it. You can't do it. You don't have it within you. The Spirit has to do it. It's the only way it can happen. You've got to be filled with the Spirit of God. Uh-oh. It's getting Pentecostal again. I'm going to tell you something. I don't even like that word, Pentecostal. Pentecost was a day. That's what Pentecost was. Pentecost was a day. It was a celebration it was a day that God had given to the Jews as a celebration day. That's what Pentecost was. Being filled with the Spirit of God is not Pentecostal. Being filled with the Spirit of God is being a child of God. Amen. That's what it is. It's being a Christian the way God intended us to be a Christian. That's what it is. Every child of God, I don't care what your denomination is. I don't care what day you choose. I don't care when. Hey, it can be on Valentine's Day. What are we then, Valentinians? <laughs> it's being a child of God. That's all that it is. That's what it is. Amen. Being filled with the Spirit of God is being a Christian the way God intended for you to be a Christian. Let's get this whole uh, other stuff out of our mind. Let's understand exactly what the Bible said. He said, be ye filled with the Spirit. That's what he said. And that's what we need to do. If we are going to be children of God, let's be children of God. If we're going to be church members, let's just admit it and let's be church members. If we're going to be free will Baptists, then let's be free will Baptists. I don't want to be free will Baptist. I don't want to be a church member. I want to be a spirit-filled child of God. Amen. That's what I want. And yet it doesn't matter what Satan throws at me, what the world throws at me, what my own flesh tries to do to me. It doesn't matter. I can have peace. I can have joy. I can rise above it. Amen. But you've got to be filled. Because if not, I, I said this at some point recently, I don't even know when. We live a Christian life like this. True, isn't it? That's right. It's a shame. It's not supposed to be that way. <clears throat> you know why we live a Christian life like this? Because we're not filled with the Spirit. We try to do so many things on our own initiative, under our own power, using our brain, thinking we know something. You can't do it. You can't. You've got to give yourself totally and wholly, 100% to God. Let Him fill you with the Spirit of God. Then let the Spirit take control. Let the Spirit call the shots. Let the Spirit direct your path. That's the only way. Amen. And if you do that, if you walk in the Spirit, filled with the Spirit, live in the Spirit, you're going to produce the fruit of the Spirit. Not maybe, not possibly, not could be. An apple tree will bring forth apples. A spirit-filled Christian will bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. And one of those things is peace. 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 All this week, I felt your heaviness. I'm telling you, I did. You can believe me, you can think what you want to think. But I felt it. And it shouldn't be that way. Yes, I should be able to know that you have a burden and you need prayer. And I should go to God on your behalf. But some of you this week, have you ever watched uh, uh, Scrooge Christmas Carol? And when Barley comes and he's dragging all these chains and boxes and, and stuff like that, some of you walk around spiritually dragging a heavy load. But you know what? That Marley told Scrooge, I forged this myself. You forged yours too. Right. You're dragging what you chose to drag. You're dragging what you put together. You're dragging what you have laid on yourself. God didn't put that on you. That's right. You did. Mm -hmm. You can blame the job. 
You can blame your husband. You can blame your parents. You can blame whoever you want to blame. You can even blame Satan, but he didn't do it either. That's right. You did it. It's your choice. You have a choice. As a child of God, Satan has no power over you. So he can't force something on you. You've got to give in and accept it. We forge our own ways. We carry what we have decided to carry. If you walk in the Spirit, if you are filled with the Spirit, you don't got to drag those things around. That's right. You don't got to be heavy hearted. You don't got to carry on. And yes, please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that if you do this, if you give yourself to God and you're filled with the Spirit, the things aren't going to make you sad. The things aren't going to uh, be the bother. I'm not saying all that, but I'm saying in the midst of it, through it all, you can have a peace down in your heart that can't be taken away. You can know and you can believe and you can understand that all things work together for good. You can know that over on the other side for the joy that is set before. I will go through this. I will endure this because there's something better over there. We can know that without a doubt. We can know that so well that these things just cannot bring us down and keep us down. Amen. But we have to Give ourselves totally. you got to understand it. And this has been preached many times in many different ways. And God keeps coming back to it. We have got to be filled with the Spirit. It's not a maybe. It's not a thing. So it's not as it would be a good thing. It's the only thing. We have got to be filled with the Spirit of God. I'm going to tell you something. If we don't, you can live the rest of your Christian life highs and lows and highs and lows and highs and lows and crying your eyes out and whining and moaning and complaining. You can do that if you want to do that. God doesn't want you to live that way. God wants you to live victorious. God wants you to live above it all. God wants you to live according to the scripture. I am more than a conqueror. There is nothing. No weapon formed against me can prosper. Look at your own life. Satan's weapons, the flesh weapons, the world's weapons are prospering when he sticks it in your heart and you go around with such a heavy heart you can't think of anything else the weapons are doing their job but if we are filled with the spirit or if we are truly sold out to God if we've given ourselves completely to him those weapons cannot do anything against us no weapon formed against me can prosper I am more than a copper I have the power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing shall by any means hurt me. Amen. Do you live like that? If not, why not? It's because you've chosen not to. That's the only reason. God has made it all available. God has told you how to get it. God has told you what to do. He's laid it out there. He did all the work. He went through the suffering and the torture and the anguish and hung on the cross and died. He did all the work. All you've got to do is come and receive the gift. That's right. But we choose not to. We'd rather be miserable. We'd rather just go around boo-hooing and crying. I've said this before, and I'll probably say it many, many other times. Some of us just like to be that way. I believe that. We like to bone and groan and boo-hoo and cry and say, oh, woe is me. It's time to live like a Christian. It's time to live like a victorious child of God. A joy-filled child of God. A child of God that has peace through everything, in everything, over everything. It's time that we become those kind of Christians. Not that we become Pentecostal. I want to make this so clear. I want you to burn it in your heart and burn it in your mind. This is not an if maybe think so should. The Bible, according to the Bible, if you disagree with me, we can talk after church. But according to the Bible, you should be, as a child of God, as a Christian, you should be filled with the Spirit. You should be according to the Word of God, according to what He said. And I'm going to tell you this on the authority of God's Word. If you are not filled with the Spirit, you you are not fully giving yourself to God. You are still walking in the flesh. You are still minding the things of the flesh. How can I say that? Because if the Spirit doesn't have control over everything, the flesh will. It's one or the other. There's no in between. So if you're not totally sold out, if you're not filled, then you are given into the flesh. And I read you the scripture, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. 
you are not pleasing to God. How's that make you feel? It's not a good thought. It's not a good feeling. We, as children of God, as born-again Christians, must be filled with the Spirit of God. Now hear me and hear me good. I'm not saying you've got to seek the second blessing. I'm not saying you've got to seek big in tongues. I'm not saying anything like that. I'm just saying you must be filled with the Spirit of God. That's what I'm saying. And there's only one way for that to happen. Crucify the flesh to make room for the Spirit. <coughs> John 14, verse 27. Christ speaking. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Christ has offered his peace to you. He has left it with you. He has come. He has done what he came to do. He has returned to sit on the right hand of the Father. But he left something with you. He says, peace I leave with you. In every, he knows what he's talking about. This is the one who went through it all. Who dealt with anything you were ever going to have to deal with and more. This is the one that had put up with 40 days and nights in the wilderness being tempted by Satan. His own turning their back on him. Being rejected. Being accused of things. All the things that he went through. Not to mention the physical torture that he went through. He knows what he's talking about. And he said peace I leave with you. And he knew what was coming. He knew what Christians in this world would face. He knew how they would turn on Christians. He knew all the things that would happen. But he still said, peace I leave with you. That's my gift to you. That's what I'm leaving when I go back. I'm going to leave you peace to walk through this life, to walk through these problems, these trials, these troubles. you got my peace. What have you done with it? Why aren't you walking in it? <coughs> We've chosen not to. So peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I may have trouble heart, don't raise your hand. Let's think back over this past week or two. How many have had troubled hearts because of bad news? Because something happened? Because something went wrong? Because something didn't go your way? Because of this, because of that, whatever the reason. How many have had troubled hearts over the past couple weeks? What did Jesus say? Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Because I have left you my peace. A peace like the world can't understand. A peace that passes all understanding. You may not even be able to understand it. I can't fully understand it. The things of God are far above my mindset, above my thinking. But I believe it because God said it. I don't have to know how it works. I only have to know that it does work. All I have to know is if I come to him the way he said, with prayer and supplication, make my request known to him, leave them with him, turn them over to him, trust him that all things work together for good, trust him that I am more than a conqueror, walk away and leave that with him. All I need to know is that I can get up and I can have a peace that passes all understanding. That's all I need to know. He said it. That makes it so. Book of John, chapter 16, verse 33. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. All these things that we've been talking about, and you can go back and you can read the things that Christ said to his disciples before he was going to go away. And he said, I told you these things. I am telling you these things. I have sent this message this morning so that you might have peace. You can have it if you accept the message. You can have it if you believe what he said. You can have it if you go through and do what he said to do. You can have the peace. He said it. These things I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. You will. You'll have problems. You'll have troubles. You'll have trials. You'll have issues. And like I said, I'm not telling you everything is going to go away and it's always going to be butterflies and balloons. I'm not telling you that. Jesus said you will have tribulation. And yes, things are going to bother you. And things are going to make you sad. But even in the midst of all of that, you can have peace. You can have joy. You can have hope. These things I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Huh? Kind of contradictory, isn't it? 
guess what? Every one of you are going to have problems. Mm -hmm. Every one of you are going to have troubles, trials, tribulations. Mm -hmm. But be happy. Mm -hmm. Contradicts itself, huh? Going to have all these things, but be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. He overcame all of these things. And when he went back, he said, my peace, I leave with you. He overcame them. He did the work. And he took what he did, wrapped it up in a nice little package, and said, I'm leaving it with you. <coughs> peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. If Christ could walk through what he walked through and deal with what he dealt with and go through everything that he had to go through, he knows what he's talking about. He knows how to get through it. He knows what is required. And he's left that with us. We just have to receive it. We just have to accept it. I know it's hard. It is hard. As long as you're in this flesh, it's going to be hard. As long as you're in this flesh, things are going to hurt you. Things are going to bother you. Things are going to worry you. It's going to happen. But they don't have to control you. They don't have to rule you. They don't have to bring you down. They don't have to steal your joy. Mm -hmm. So many Christians have lost their joy because of situation and circumstance. Situation and circumstance do not control where your joy comes from. Situation and circumstance have no power over God, who is the source of our joy. But we let those things get between us and God. We let those things block the good things of God, the joy that God wants to give us, the peace that God wants to give us, we put those things in the way. He's given us a way to avoid doing that so that whatever is going on, it can't defeat us. We are more than conquerors. It can't prosper against us. But there's no way we're going to fully experience this. There's no way we're fully attained to this. There's no way that we're going to be able to do this in the midst of the things that we've got to do with unless we do it God's way. You know, making a resolution or, or making a decision or, or whatever doesn't do it. You can sit and say, yes, I'm going to be that way. I've determined, I'm going to make up my mind, I'm going to try as hard as I can, and I'm going to be that way. No, you ain't. You can try and try and try and try, but in the flesh you cannot do it. There's only one possible way to receive these things from God. There's only one possible way to live this kind of a life in Christ, and that is through the Spirit. That's the only way. Let me tell you something. When God gave me this message, I knew it was going to be a message to give you hope. I knew it was going to be a message to let you know that whatever you're going through, God can give you peace. I knew that about it, that it was God was sending something to try to lift you back up and to make you feel better and to heal your heart or your worried mind or whatever. I knew all that. I had no idea that I was going to talk about being filled with the Spirit as much as I did. But that's what God wants. That's what God wants from his children. He wants you filled with his spirit so that you can truly be his children. So that you can be the, the Christians that he intended for us to be. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. This is talked about a lot here. It's been talked about a lot here for a long time. And I know I throw the word Pentecostal around a lot because every time I get to talking about this kind of thing, I can just see, see in people's minds. He wants to be Pentecostal. He wants to be Pentecostal. I know that's how people think. That's not what I'm thinking. I don't want to be Pentecostal. I don't want you to be Pentecostal. I want you to be children of God. That's what I want. That's what God wants. Fully, fully, 100% children of God. I don't care if you never speak in tongues. I do it when I'm not trying. I get my tongue all wrapped up and can't talk great. <laughs> That's not what's important. That's not what matters. If God gives you that gift, great. But that's not what we're seeking after. 
We're seeking after the Spirit to empower us, to strengthen us, to help us, to give us joy, to give us peace, to give us all this fruit of the Spirit, to give us power to be a witness, to give us power to present the gospel. That's why we need to be filled with the Spirit of God. And if God gives you the other gifts, He gives you all the gifts, that's great. Take them. Be happy and use them for His glory and for His honor and to reach the law. But that's not what we're after. We need to be after the filling of the Spirit so that we can be the children of God we're supposed to be. And I'm going to tell you this, and I'm going to try to close. I started out by saying, you don't got to wait for goosebumps. You don't got to wait for butterflies in your belly. You don't got to wait for anything else. And when God speaks in the Word, it is so. If God said it, it is so. And throughout his word, he has said to be filled with the spirit. Throughout his word, he has said to be careful for nothing and be anxious about nothing. To take everything to him. If you want peace, if you want joy, if you want comfort, if you want all those things. Hey, throughout his word, he has said all those things. And we sit around and we carry them and we drag those chains and we drag those weights. When God has been crying out and God has been crying out and God has been crying out, just bring them to me and give them to me and just present your request. Just make it known and I will give you peace. That's what he said. But you can't do it, can you? You can't or you wouldn't. How many of us would just the worries you got on your mind, the heartbreak that you got, the concern that you got, how many of us would choose to live that way? If you had a choice set before you, I set before you this day a blessing and a person. Mm -hmm. Which one would you choose? It's a blessing to walk in joy and peace and comfort and all the good things of God. It's a curse to carry that other stuff around. So why would you do it? If you've chosen to do it, good on you. But if you want to choose the other, you can. God has already said, come and get it. Come and get it. I said this. If we could have gotten rid of it and laid it down and, and had everything good, we would have done it. But we can't. We can't. Because we still got too much of the flesh. That's the problem. We need to crucify that flesh. We need to be filled with the Spirit and walk in the Spirit. And then we can have these things. That's basically all I got, but I'm going to add this. Whatever you're going through. Financial, employment, family, hard choices, hard decisions, sickness, troubles. There's an unexhaustible list of things you deal with. Whatever it is, God has said it. These things don't have to weigh you down. Right. You don't have to drag these things around with you. You don't have to be defeated by these things. You don't have to let these weapons be prosperous over you. But it is your choice. Your choice. We sit and we wait for God to come by and open the top of our head and shove in everything. But it doesn't work that way. You've got to make the step. He said, I've said that I don't know how many times, and you know it. He said, if you do, then I will. If you come, I will answer. If you seek, I will be found. If you give it to me, I will take it. He's not going to come and pry it out of your hands. He's not going to come and force you to give it up. He has made a way. He has presented the opportunity. And he's left the choice in your hands. I don't care what you're going through today. I don't care what you're dealing with today. It doesn't matter how bad it is. It doesn't matter if it's the worst thing. And none of us can ever really understand exactly what you've got to deal with. I know one who does. He understands exactly what you're dealing with. He understands exactly what you're going through. And he knows exactly how to give you peace in that thing. He 
He knows exactly how to give you comfort. He knows exactly how to give you joy. He knows the answer you need to know, but you have got to give it to him and let him handle it. You have got to pray, not my will, but your will be done. Show me what you want to do. I'm sold out to you. I'm giving it to you because I know if I give it to you and your will is done down the road somewhere, it is for the good. It is for the better. I know and I understand that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. I'm believing you. I'm trusting you. And I'm giving it to you. And I will guarantee you on the authority of God's word, you can get up and walk above that situation. You can get up and walk above that circumstance. You can have joy. You can have peace. You can have all the good things of God. You can produce the fruit of the Spirit if the Spirit is indwelling you. But it's your choice. Now if you think you got to go home and go up in your attic and pray for 40 days before you're going to get it, you've already been defeated. That's not in there. <clears throat> There's a scripture where it said, how many of you, if your son asked for a fish, would give him a rock? If you asked for bread, you would give him a, a serpent, however that goes. How much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them who do what? Ask. Just ask. That's it. He wants you to have it. He wants to give it to you, but he's not going to force it on you. I don't know what people think of the Spirit or how you receive the Spirit. It's been left out of the church for so long or taught in ways that are not biblical for so long. People misunderstand. You don't need me to lay my hands on you. You don't need anybody to lay their hands on you. Except God. That's it. I hope you've got it. I hope you understand. I hope that whatever you're going through, you, you've made a decision to give it to God. You've made a choice to give it to God, to trust Him, to believe Him, to truly, honestly pray in me and not my will, but thine be done. If we can do that, we can have that peace that passes all understanding, that joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's a, a heritage of every child of God. But so few of us take advantage of it. So few of us have it. And it's our own fault. Mm -hmm. It's there if you want it. That's all that I have.